Hi guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Do not forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment on what you would want to do or what you want us to do next time. Today we shall definitely be taking out fox locks and showing you how to take them out in a more precise and simpler manner. Fox locks are notorious for causing breakage, especially along the hairline. However, you can prevent this by taking them down the right way and of course, the way you maintain them. Stick to the end for tips on how to prevent breakage when you have four locks in. For now, let's dive right into how to take down four locks the right way. Start by untying them. Remove any scrunchie or hair tie you are using to hold them together. Let free so you can easily unplate each of them. Use a spray bottle filled with water to spread some water onto your hair before starting to unplate. Moisture from water can make detangling way much easier. It helps remove the tangles that may have formed from having in your hair without any harsh pulling that could result into breakage. Don't forget to use a pair of scissors to carefully cut the synthetic hair, binding every lock and thereafter unravel it. Take care not to cut your own hair, feel for your real hair and cut only the synthetic bit of the hair. Thereafter, use the tip of a rat tail comb to unplate the hair. Usually, fox locks are attached to small three-strand braids. These tiny braids are made for every section hair onto which the locks will be attached. For the next step, use the other end of the rat tail comb to detangle in the manner that you are seeing in this video. Pass the comb through the section of hair in brief swift movements being very gentle so as to prevent breakage. Inevitably, you will still notice that some hair has been lost, but that's shed hair, not broken hair. We shed around 50 to 100 hairs a day. Crazy, right? However, when your hair is in a protective style like fox look, that shed hair is trapped in the protective style. Therefore, when you finally take the protective style out, you will notice that the shed hair that has accumulated over the time that you have had in your protective style. So the hair that you are seeing in the comb is no cause for alarm as hair shedding is a natural part of the hair growth cycle as opposed to breakage. Shed hair is usually longer than broken hair so that's how you can tell the difference. Additionally, shed hair usually has a white bulb at the end unlike broken hair. Back to unplating the fox locks. You can cut each one short to shorten the time that you need to spend in the takedown process. Cut the fox lock to a safe distance from where your natural hair is to prevent cutting your own hair. You can estimate where to cut depending on the level at which your hair was before you got your fox locks. Cut a few centimeters from that point to cater for new growth. It's estimated that our hair grows about half an inch every month. Repeat the procedure for each lock, making sure to be gentle and careful not to cut your own hair. To make the rest of the detangling process much easier, apply some conditioner to soften the hair we highly recommend our savorite booster hair conditioners conditioners add a boost of moisture for the hair strands making them softer easier to comb and less likely to break as you detangle make sure you apply the conditioner to every part of your hair apply only to your hair strands as they are the ones which will benefit from the conditioner not the scalp massage the conditioner in your hair and thereafter wash it out you can already see some dirt starting to leave the hair. When it's all out, 
apply shampoo to wash your hair. We recommend to use a sulfate-free shampoo like our Sapphire Hair Shampoo. Sulfate-free shampoos are much more moisturizing and don't strip the natural oils from your hair. If you are dealing with excessive buildup from having in your forelocks for a long time, experts recommend using a clarifying shampoo to effectively cleanse the hair. If you are looking for one to use, Livara has a locally produced clarifying shampoo enriched with shea butter, guava leaf extract, and peppermint for a refreshing touch. Back to shampooing. It's much easier when you apply the shampoo to already wet hair. It lathers easier here and works more effectively. Use your fingertips to massage the shampoo into the scalp and through the hair to avoid using your fingernails to cleanse your hair scalp as this could result in cuts or tears in the skin which could lead to infections. Use shampoo twice for more and effective cleansing. When you're rinsing your hair, use lukewarm or cold water to rinse as hot water dries out the scalp. Excessively hot water could also lead to scalds from the steam, so make sure to regulate the temperature of the water you are using. Thereafter, use a microfiber towel or old t-shirt to plop your hair. If you are wondering what hair plopping is, it's simply a method of drying your hair after shampooing without using heat. Unlike regular towels, these materials absorb excess moisture from the hair without causing any breakage since their fabric is softer compared to normal towels. Should you wish to blow dry your hair afterward, for added length, ensure to use a heat protectant spray or cream. At Livara, we use our locally produced Sapphire 2-in-1 deep conditioner and leave-in treatment prior to any form of heat styling. It acts as a natural heat protectant since it has ingredients like aloe vera that shield the hair from damage during heat styling.
When heat styling, use the heat tool, in this case a blow dryer, in swift moments to prevent prolonged hair exposure to heat. Remember to limit heat styling to a few times as possible as excessive heat styling dries out the hair, leading to breakage which can manifest as stunted hair growth. Hair never really stops growing. However, when the rate of growth equals the rate of breakage, it can appear as if hair growth is stunted. After blow drying, comb through with a wide tooth comb and style as you like. And now, as promised, here are some tips for preventing breakage. Moisturize regularly. Constant moisture is the key to healthy looks. Use a water-based moisturizer like our Savorite Spritz Moisturizer Hairspray to regularly supply your hair and scalp with the moisture they need. This sustains the hair's strength, preventing breakage and also prevents the scalp from drying out, preventing itching and formation of dandruff. Avoid wearing tight hairstyles. While up hairdos can look nice and neat, they are damaging to the hairline. Wearing tight up hairdos on a regular basis will no doubt cause breakage along your hairline and nape area. Make sure to wear fox locks loose or opt for down hairdos instead. Don't overwash your locks. Overwashing your locks every or every few days may dry out the scalp resulting in itching, flaking, and even thinning of locks. We recommend that you wash your locks at least once every one to two weeks. Dry your locks thoroughly after washing to prevent any odors. Thank you for watching till the end. We hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. Be sure to like, comment, share, and of course, subscribe for more hair tutorials. See you in the next video.